We begin this edition with a focus on the Horn of Africa nation of Ethiopia, where Abiy Ahmed's government has been locked in a year-long war with the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or the TPLF. In the latest, Ethiopia has now outlined conditions for possible talks with rebels from the country's war-hit Tigray region. The move follows days of diplomatic efforts by international envoys to avert further surge in the fighting. According to Foreign Ministry spokesman Dina Mufti, one of the conditions for possible talks will be for the TPLF to withdraw from the Amhara and Afar regions. Mufti stressed the terms have not been agreed to. As per the ministry spokesperson, there are conditions. First, stop your attacks. Secondly, leave the areas you have entered, that is Amhara and Afar. Third, recognize the legitimacy of this government. He further clarified no decision has been made to enter into, into negotiations, but TPLF spokesperson Geta Chu Reda said that pulling out from Amhara and Afar before talks begin is an absolute non-starter. The paramilitary group is demanding an end to what the UN describes as a de facto humanitarian blockade on Tigray. Hundreds of thousands of people are believed to be living in famine-like conditions in Tigray. No aid has gone by road since October the 18th. 364 trucks are stuck in the capital of Afar as author authorization to proceed is still pending. Now amid escalating war and growing famine, last week the government imposed a nationwide state of emergency. In a fresh wave of mass arrests, some 22 UN staffers were detained in the raids. This has further hobbled the aid response. The UN has also sounded the alarm of about 72 drivers who have been detained in Afar. The drivers were contracted by the World Food Program. In recent days, international envoys have stepped up efforts to broker a cessation of hostilities after U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, Jeffrey Feldman, left Ethiopia on Wednesday. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will travel to Kenya, Nigeria and Senegal next week. Blinken will meet with Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta to discuss topics including regional security issues such as Ethiopia, Somalia and even Sudan. And so we are hopeful that um, given the important work that um, President Obasanjo is, uh, is engaged in, uh, the um, uh, efforts that, uh, that we're making uh, and others uh, who are engaged, that there is still uh, a window to, to pull back and to move this to a, to a better place. There is a, uh, an opportunity, I hope, for everyone to pull back, to sit down, uh, to get a halt, to uh, what's happening on the ground uh, and ultimately to produce a ceasefire, to have uh, access for uh, humanitarian uh, assistance uh, and over time to negotiate a more durable political resolution. The Ethiopian military began hitting the Tigray capital with airstrikes on October the 18th. The arrests came as a further challenge to humanitarian aid efforts. Millions of people in Tigray badly need aid supplies, including food and medicines. The Ethiopian government describes the arrests as part of a legitimate effort to stamp out the TPLF. Several foreign missions, including the U.S. Embassy and the European Union, have decided to withdraw non-essential staff from Ethiopia. The war in Africa's second most populous country has killed thousands of people and displaced millions. Now the Tigray forces are approaching Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa. Well, for more on this, Coletta Wajohi is joining us live from Addis Ababa. Wajohi, good to see you again and welcome to this broadcast. Now, the process of finding solutions have seemingly begun, but with conditions, are the rebels likely to give in to the government's request given the severity of the situation? Well, Mjoka, what we're seeing right now uh, is uh, reiteration by the government of the same issues that it has been saying over time, uh, asking the, 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 the rebel faction to retreat and go back and leave these two areas because uh, after the, their entry in these two areas, we had the United Nations saying that at, at least now 1.7 million people, in addition to the, about, to the more than 5 million people in Tigray, have now been uh, forced to be in need of emergency need. They have, there has been tension created in these two regions where the government is talking about and asking the, the TPLF to move away from. Uh, 
it's also an, also an a reiteration on the fact that the government wants the Tigray People's Liberation Front to, le to recognize the legitimacy of the government of the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, as well as lay down their arms. And uh, that's all the government has been saying over and over again. There is no official, um, and, the, and the, the spokesperson of the Foreign Affairs uh, emphasized this, that there is no official decision uh, or there is no decision made yet by the government of Ethiopia that they will sit down with the rebel faction or have a negotiation of any kind, but just reiteration of what they have been saying all along. Coletta, the humanitarian situation is likely to worsen if hostilities do not end. Maybe you can outline to our viewers how bad the issue is on ground now. Well, what we have is at least the UN had said about 7 million people have so far been affected by this uh, conflict over time, over the past year. And within the Tigray region alone, we had about 5.2 million people, according to the UN data. Now, uh, the, the latest is uh, the UN saying that from October 18th, uh, no aid has or no assistance has, uh, has accessed the Tigray region, at least by road. They say they have about over 300 trucks that are in the Afar region, which is a neighboring region to Tigray. And one of the, uh, the areas that the UN is now using, which seems safe. The UN is safe using to, to enter Tigray. They say that about 300 trucks are still stuck there waiting for clearance, uh, the possible clearance for that aid to, to go in there. So a delay in aid even in a day for people who really need this, who are really dependent on emergency aid, uh, opens up for more, 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 more challenges. So yes, the UN is really concerned and that's why we are seeing probably it putting more effort and saying that ceasefire needs to happen, cessation of hostilities needs to happen, at least for those millions of people who need emergency aid to get this. Finally, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to travel to Kenya, Senegal, and even Nigeria next week. His trip is touted as being a peace caravan effort for Ethiopia. What role or significance will this trip play? Well, uh, it, it will be interesting to see what uh, what kind of discussions he will have with Kenya, Nigeria, and Senegal, considering that the three countries, uh, their leaders were here, were, were invited by, by the, the government of Ethiopia during the inauguration of the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed uh, about uh, two months ago or so. Uh, he invited them. Uh, is amongst, so we would say that uh, the Prime Minister feels uh, he kind of trusts them, and, and he, probably that was the reason why they were among the leaders that were invited for the inauguration. So yes, Blinken meeting these people is quite, quite strategic. And we know Kenya, for example, has uh, been at the forefront, I mean, uh, and, and in collaboration with the U.S. really to try and see how, um, I mean, uh, uh, peace and uh, all this normalcy can return uh, to the country of Ethiopia. So it's, it's interesting to see what agenda Blinken will have with these countries. We don't know if, uh, for example, entities from Ethiopia will be invited to meet him in any of these countries. We don't know. We're yet to see. But uh, that will be quite significant uh, going forward in this conflict. Live from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, thank you very much, Coletta Wajohi.